Hi everybody, Dugras here with Dugras Reports. Welcome to another episode of Frugal Points. This is the series where I drive in my car and talk to you about the philosophical side of points and miles. Today I'd like to talk about Chase Bank and how Chase Ultimate Rewards are kind of the old reliable. So a couple days ago I did the Anthony Venture podcast and when he was interviewing me, one of the questions came from a fellow content creator, Matt Clausen, and he said, so many freedom cards. Okay, I guess that's technically not a question, just a comment. And I know it was somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but it's true. Between myself and Player 2, we each have two original freedom cards, the Visa, and two freedom flexes, the Master Cards. So that's a total of four. So what that means is rotating categories come out to 5x up to $1,500 of spend per card. Uh, that would be $3,000 of spend for each of us. That would be $6,000 of spend total. 5x points, if we max that out, I believe that comes out to 30,000 points per quarter. So that's not too bad. Now, some people might say things like maxing those out is kind of hard to do. And I know some people just don't like rotating categories. But I'll give you my use case, at least a little bit about it. And it involves generally buying prepaid gift cards. Prepaid visas, prepaid MasterCards. I do prefer prepaid visas. Right now, uh, the current category bonus is groceries for the Freedom and Freedom Flex. So let's just say for the sake of example, I go to a grocery store and I buy two prepaid Visa gift cards that are $500 in value each. Now there is a fee for that and that fee is about $6. It's $5.95 for every $500 increment and this is assuming you buy the $500 which is the maximum. But let's round that off to 6 bucks. So if I get $1,000 worth, that's two cards, $12. So for a fee of $12, I buy $1,000 worth of these prepaid gift cards. And yes, technically it would be $1,012, but again, we're going to keep the math easy. The math is really, really close. You actually earn a little bit better than what I'm describing. So you get 5x points on that $1,000. That is how much audience, ladies and gentlemen? That's 5,000 Chase UR points. I'll come back to what you can do with 5,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards in a little bit. So there's the setup. Before I go any further, on this particular YouTube channel I talk about finding epic value including, but not limited to, credit card rewards for the average American. If that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe to the channel. Please also consider becoming a channel member, a Dugras diehard. For only $3 a month, well, you'll get inside information like members only videos early release videos, priority access to comments, etc. Let's keep going. All right, so I've set this up. Why would I buy $1,000 worth of prepaid gift cards? Well, my wife and I do the majority of our grocery shopping at Walmart using Walmart online delivery. So you order online, drive to the store, they put it in the trunk of your car, you drive home. Over the last couple years, of course, the prices of groceries have gone up. This would include non-grocery items like toiletries, paper towels, uh, electric razors, those kind of things. So we're probably talking a minimum of $250 a week we spend at Walmart, possibly up to as much as $350 a week at Walmart. So it's not going to take that long to use the $1,000. Uh, we'll just deposit that into our Walmart account. You can buy basically a virtual Walmart gift card through walmart.com using that same gift card we just purchased. Let it sit there. It's sort of like credit in your account. That's the great thing about a Visa prepaid card. You can spend it on anything. So you can do the same exercise with your utilities, your water bill, your electric bill. If you pay tuition for a student, if you um, pay rent and your landlord accepts credit cards, etc. That's another way to do it. But instead of just getting one point per dollar, two points per dollar, I'm getting five points per dollar since I'm funneling it through this whole thing. All right, so coming back around to what does that get me? Well, 
when I think about what 5,000 uh, points can get me, one thing that comes to mind is if you have a Sapphire Reserve, that 5,000 points can be used for 1.5% more value in their travel portal on flights, hotels, whatever. And that would be the equivalent of 7.5% uh, return on spend. When you take your 5% you earn times 1.5 on the redemption side. Well, what's 7.5% of $1,000? That's $75. So you got $75 cash back equivalent. You got to subtract out that $12 you spent to buy the Visa gift cards. And we're talking $63 in net benefit by going through this exercise. Plus, I really like Chase Points. They're really flexible. I've been talking a lot lately about the Chase Aeroplan card, and if you transfer those points over to um, Aeroplan when there's a bonus of at least 50,000 points, 20% bonus, 10% uh, auto bonus that's built in as a feature of the Aeroplan card when you transfer 50,000 Chase points, that's 1.3 bump up, sending them to Aeroplan, and then you can pay yourself back through Aeroplan at 1.25, so that's 1.625 cents per point. So I don't know what the math comes out to on that, but it's even better than the $63 of net value. It's probably $66, $67 of net value, something like that. I also think about Hyatt stays. That's a really easy redemption. So 5,000 points will get you a category one Hyatt, like a Hyatt place or Hyatt house during a um, standard award stay. So not off peak, not peak, just standard. And those aren't all that hard to find. I've used those multiple times in my traveling career. Generally speaking, although there are some exceptions, those lower end Hyatt stays, uh, you're going to be getting at least two cents per point. I mean, really, $5,000 for a hotel stay. How often do you find a hotel stay in a halfway decent hotel that's under 100 bucks? So we're talking at least two cents per point. So now I'm getting thousand dollars of cash back equivalent on the gross take out your twelve dollars in fees I'm getting eighty eight dollars in benefit so I guess what I'm getting at is this you know some people say well I don't like playing the rotating category game but I have found there's lots of easy ways to use those rotating categories because Chase's categories for the freedom and freedom flex are usually easy things um, some that I can think of in the last couple years, they've had pharmacy before. I guess I don't know if that's been in the last couple years, but they have in the past had pharmacy. They've had PayPal, and if you go to CVS Pharmacy, you can actually pay in person with PayPal. And on the Flex, you get an extra 2%. Trust me, it's just the way it works out because they consider drugstores to be a category, so you would actually be walking away with 7% cash back or 7x points in that situation. Gas stations, well, there are gas stations that sell prepaid Visa gift cards. In fact, there's one specific gas station I know of where they don't charge a fee. So I can buy a $500 gift card for $500 straight up. Now, I'm not gonna tell you which gas station it is. That's between me and the gas station. And I don't know that it's on purpose. It might be a coding error, I'm not sure. Um, but they do exist. And even if you are paying the $6 fee, it's still worth doing. Um, Let's see, they've also had uh, Lowe's and Home Depot before. Well, Lowe's sells prepaid gift cards. Home Depot does, but at lower values. I know at Lowe's there's only a couple that qualify, but they do qualify. Um, are there any others? Let's see, gas, grocery, dining is often mixed in. Dining is harder because you can't find a lot of dining places that sell prepaid gift cards, but um, Cracker Barrel does. So if you go to a Cracker Barrel, uh, a lot of times they will sell those uh, prepaid Visa gift cards also, and you can buy one there. So these are just some ideas on how you might think a little more creatively on your spend. You don't even have to do manufactured spending, you just have to do creative spending. So you're going to go to one place, buy a gift card, use it to buy something somewhere else. And especially if it's something like Amazon or Walmart where you can just deposit it into your account and you don't have to keep the physical gift card beyond that, that's even better. 
Put your comments down below and let me know if you've ever done this or if you like or dislike my strategy. Don't forget to click the like button. And as always, may your spending be frugal and may your points be plenteous. Thanks for watching.